afternoon, dear friends and uh, dear music lovers, dear vinyl collectors, and dear people of all stages of life. Uh, welcome to Moi Chai Club, club that was recently opened by Sergei Shevilev, who will be once, once ready. He will speak to you, he will present himself to you, but really appreciate his involvement in all of that. So we can have this uh, cozy and beautiful place in the center of Amsterdam in these uh, strange times to meet here. Welcome everybody once again. I, uh, in good old Soviet tradition, I, I prepared some sort of uh, introductory messages. I wrote them down so I don't mumble too much, which could sum up the story, this whole process of how we came to the point of uh, publishing records, publishing this uh, interesting music and uh, of course in the first place I mean music of Fred Halles who will also take a microphone later on. I would like uh, to briefly sanctify the prehistory of the formation of uh, my personal publishing ambition which ran to my uh, musical activity. Some of you know me, some not. So first of all, I uh, myself, I always dreamed about having my own publishing platform. Here in Amsterdam, in the early 90s, formed an interesting group of people uh, that came from various parts of the Soviet Union. One of them is Maxim Shapersnikov, who stands there. Uh, so the publishing activities started in the early 90s with uh, record label called Kidnap, which still exists, I believe. And uh, for me, it was the first opportunity to see my own vinyl, my own uh, music put on vinyl records. I don't mention CD right now, since we're talking about only analog vinyl uh, format. And then in the early 2000s, with the help of another friend from former Soviet Union, Vladimir Lomberg, under the name of Solaris, we started to publish rare electronic music on vinyl and uh, some of the records are still available and uh, we managed to do three releases but label collapsed because of the deception of the distribution company that we were working with and um, that was my first experience in confronting the capitalist principles of doing business as means of profit and nothing more. So the record label found its distribution in England, sent all of its uh, catalog to England, and then a few weeks later, the distribution company uh, declared liquidation. So we lost about 8,000 pounds, and the, so obviously the people behind the distribution comp company knew about the problems, but they so we lost everything and uh, we lost about 8,000 pounds at that time, which are still lost. Parallel with this, also, uh, I'm glad that uh, here we see so Maxim Shaporsnikov and Fred Halles. Uh, Holland was an interesting place then. First of all, due to this uh, regular ethnic music program that was running on NOS, Radio Fear, which was called uh, Vandal in the Tag. VPRO, sorry, yeah, VPRO. I think first time I met Fred Halles at the house of Maxim Shaporsnikov, who was also frequently going to Siberia. And in some ways I give him credit of pioneering lots of things. He went to Tuva. He also brought a lot of interesting musicians in the early 90s and 2000 here. It was a unique opportunity of seeing those people coming to Western Europe with their culture. People here were completely fascinated with these traditions, including myself. But in early 2000, I uh, made a couple of programs for Walter Schlosser, who was chief editor of uh, Wandel in the Tag, this program. My, the topic of my programs went about Central Asia. I made programs on Kalmykia, on Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and, uh, Northern Caucasus. I also started to make long trips around this time to Central Asia where I made field recordings and studied local primary musical cultures. 
And for those who have ever visited remote regions that still exist, where people still live in a traditional pre-modern society, opens up a world where people live in harmony with nature, where all daily activities take place in a kind of a ritual. Ritual in tea drinking, ritualistic tea drinking, funerals, calendar festivities, all kinds of religious ceremonies. And of course, the role of music in this regard was so uh, strongly manifested in all its richness and diversity, which in comparison with what we see in our developed society can be determined as um, there, as a living tradition. I'm sharing these thoughts because all of that uh, inspired me to, to choose the content that have been so far chosen for uh, Tropos records. So this observation led me to become uh, interested also in trends in philosophy that are critical of modernity and can be defined as a traditionalist teachings. Since uh, our platform is also sort of a cultural hub where people can meet, they exchange uh, information, uh, I would like to mention some names that uh, inspired me, particularly uh, in the name of uh, French philosopher René Guénon, uh, who is considered to be a godfather of uh, European traditionalism. These tr teachings would also constitute that the ascendancy of middle class values and liberalism would result in this in the destruction of the peculiar culture of nations which we witness today actually by now we all can see this sort of tyrannical mediocrity of the industrial societies uh, we can observe the cultural uniformity and formation of colorless intermediate figure also, I noticed that uh, when criticism of modern societies come from the intellectual with the academic backgrounds, mainstream would label it as uh, reactionary, regardless of uh, political spect spectrum it represents. The last uh, sort of thing I want to add is that in, in recent days I I'm reading a French polymath, Roger Caillat, who is not very known, but he is described as the last encyclopedist, and he wrote on the diverse themes as insect behavior, myths, war, structural anthropology, science fiction. He wrote about Hitler, masks, detective novels, dreams, Montesquieu, periodic table, poetry, unicorns, lucifers, and all other uh, topics. But he also focused on establishing inadmissible similarities between human and insects. And I mention insects also because in our future releases, we are planning to release the sound uh, field recordings of the various sounds of insects from Japan. Plan to publish interesting uh, hydrophone recordings of the whales from Hawaii, hunchback whales, frogs from Southern Africa, from the Limpopo re re uh, region. But uh, Roger Coyua, he in his work Myth and the Man, he analyzes three situations of mantis behavior. You know all mantis? Mantis is actually vandal in the tuck. Uh, in English, this insect is called mantis. And in Greek, mantis means prophet. He analyzes the life of this peculiar insect who are generally quite aggressive towards one another. The sexual cannibalism can be observed in them. For instance, female mantis tears off the head of the male before copulating with him, achieving more prolonged spasmatic movements during intercourse. And in the end, the female begins to absorb his body directly during the act of love. So he drew parallels between mantis and uh, humans, because humans are quite cruel to one another as well. And uh, he also describes three stages of life of mantis thought that the second stage, which I just ex will explain to you, reminds me of the situation our modern culture is being placed now. It's a second stage of the mantis, because the first stage of uh, life of mantis represents when mantis is being attacked, it pretends to be dead, falls into some sort of a catatonic state, when even if you analyze all biological processes in his body, they completely stop. And yet he's still alive, you know, at a certain moment he comes up from this state and continues to live. But I thought most peculiar was the second stage, which it is characterized by an automatic behavior called 
differential sensitivity phenomenon that does not go beyond cataleptic tetanosis. I'll explain what it is. So in a praying mantis, it corresponds to the stage when it dies, but the internal mechanism of reflexes allows it to manifest various type of vital activity. By being dead, it can move, maintain the balance, copulate, lay eggs, and even make nests. So I think our culture in some way resembles this state, you know, if we look outside. And that's also the reason that uh, this platform was created. I would like to finish my introductory speech with a quotation from uh, Roger Kaya, who says, as a member of species, the human species, which is late coming, temporary and transient, it will not even last as long as the dinosaurs lasted. And yet we managed to bring out two, I include my own uh, publication, but uh, in the first place, I mean the publication of Fred Halles. I, uh, as I said, I, I met him long time ago. I heard his uh, field recordings and I was completely fascinated with it. And uh, by the way, with Fred Halles, we tried to, to create already such a pl pl platform under the name of Tropos, but various grant giving institutions refused us. And the main inspiration was this Russian magazine, which was called Krugazor. And actually Tropos is the Greek form of word Krugazor. So because Tropos implies a certain circular movements. And this uh, magazine was published in Soviet Union from 1962. It's a unique magazine because it can be directly put on the record player and it consists of uh, flexi records with quite unique content. There were lots of spoken word, there were also, like usually the first pages would be dedicated to the speeches of uh, party members. It would be completely sort of boring, patriotic uh, Soviet Union communist mambo jamba, which in this, by now, even that, uh, this content I quite value, you know, you can use it, we can remix it, we can loop it, we can use it in the conceptual ways, but uh, this um, magazine was a big inspiration for us. So now that Tropos Records became a reality, I would like to invite Fred Halles. Welcome everybody. Uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, the record itself, the land of three fox, eh? and the content of it. The uh, record is um, what you can say is a the essence of uh, 20 years of recording music in Southeast Asia. And it's usually done in the highland of Southeast Asia. And it started in 1991, and the last recording on the record is from 2011. The name, The Land of Three Fox, refers to the idea that every morning starts with a fog. In the daytime, it will slowly dissolve itself. So in every season, also in the dry season, or in the wet season, or in the cold season, there are the three seasons which are usual in that area. There is, the day starts with the fog, and it has to do with the mountain area. And that's where the name comes from. Uh, recordings uh, were made by different, different cultures, music cultures, of that area. And there are quite many, and they are quite different in language, in material culture, and also in their musics. Uh, every music is in itself already a, a complete system and it has uh, its own melodies, its own form of music instruments and also its own form of uh, uh, singing, for example, vocals uh, and, uh, and the things they express in it. It is a type of music that one can hear not very often. It's even nowadays, about 20 years ago or 30 years ago, it was even more difficult to find the type of music. And it's unfortunately slowly disappearing also. So in that sense, it's uh, a kind of homage to uh, the people over there in that region. You can hear more of these sounds in the monthly radio program I still make on the concert center, the Klankbron, which is filled with this type of music and other types of same type of music from uh, the rest of the world. Okay, now the record itself. Eh? The first number on uh, the record, so on the A side, number one, is a song called Help, and that refers to the situation the people, the musicians in that time, were in. And they were refugees staying on the border of Thailand and Burma. 
and it was just a few years after the revolt of 1988. And then the same thing happened as nowadays again happens in Burma. Uh, the army was uh, quite cruelly uh, treating uh, the people over there, the citizens. There was an, an outright war happening in the uh, outlying areas, so that means in the border areas, as well uh, in the north, in the east, as in the west, as in the south also. Basically in the whole country. The people in the song express a question of help. They want to have help from other people in their precarious situation. Uh, because living in a refugee camp in uh, Thailand is not easy. Uh, I mean, I have to say, people have no um, identity cards, are not allowed to do any work, and have no land or oh, anything else. You know, they are dependent on uh, other people who give things to them. In the music itself, you hear the, a number of uh, characteristics you find in most musics of uh, the record. That is, the vocals are almost seamlessly fused with the tubes, pen flute tubes, which are used for the uh, uh, instrumental accompaniment. This is something which uh, is a special characteristic for this type of music. I would say you have to listen to it and then you will understand. The second song, and also the fifth song on the uh, A side are both Camus songs. Camus is a minority which lives in uh, Laos and a bit in uh, Thailand and a bit also in China and Vietnam, but mainly in Laos. And they have a way of singing they call Tum, which is um, a, a way that people express what they experience or what they feel, their emotions, in uh, a poetic scheme. And uh, this is a a song style which everyone of this ethnic group can uh, perform. Basically you are even supposed to perform it if you are in the company of a group of people and each one will sing his own song. Now, uh, and the fifth song on that side brings you a special vocal technique with a lot of bent tones in it. And it's uh, much more, it's purely vocal and it's much more as you usually find in uh, song style which have yeah, tremolos or that type of uh, things, you know. So that points out to the uh, idea of band tones, which is more generally spread in Southeast Asia. Oh yeah, you can see also on the inside cover, by the way, these are the, the musicians which perform the first song. So that's the Kayo people. They should be honored because it's, they are quite special, I have to say. More as any star. Then we have the third track is an instrumental track and it's the same third track is also on the b-side they are both instrumental tracks of a gong orchestra now, the gong orchestra is a type of uh, music uh, musical group that you can find in southeast asia quite often in this case in the south of um, laos but uh, as we as was already said by the musicologist uh, jaap kunst they probably the gong orchestra came from that area, as you can see in the tuning of, of the gamelan uh, instruments in Indonesia. Uh, there has also been found a stone type of uh, gamelan, also in Vietnam, which is from prehistoric times. So it has been there already for a long time. It's also, by the way, the type of music which is mostly as associated with uh, Southeast Asia. Now, the fourth track on the A side is a uh, Koran uh, harp song. The, the harp is only uh, played by uh, Burma and by the Karen. That's the only areas in the whole uh, whole Asia where the, where the harp is still a used, usual, usual instrument. And in this song, uh, the man uh, expresses his uh, uh, the problems he had with uh, adapting to uh, live in a new village because he moved from Om Khoi to Mayang Song province in Thailand to live with his uh, loved one, with his wife and he had to get used to the new people who live in the village but also not only the people but also the spirits and both have to accept you otherwise your life will be miserable and this is a type of thing which happens uh, if you talk about southeast asia you have to talk also about the spirits you know it comes back later also uh, the site ends then with a uh, yao song that's a marriage song and it's part of a uh, it's played on a shawm so a double reed instrument it is a loud instrument. It takes also a lot of effort to uh, make sound on it. Cheeks will be bulging, you know. And you have a special uh, little tool 
in front of the uh, shawm to uh, keep your lips uh, on, the, on the correct place. This type of song is, is, is part of a cycle in which vocals alternated by uh, shawm pieces. And then we come to the B side. Tension is focused on free reed instruments. It starts with the Thai dam song, so the black Thai, also from Laos, in which a woman is singing, a kind of love song, and there is a choir which um, supports her. There is also a P, so a free reed single tube uh, instrument, which, um, as they say, acts as an extra voice. It supports as well the, the vocalist as it encourages it at the same time. So it leads the melody and it follows the melody. This type of instrument is for the northern part of Southeast Asia a quite usual instrument. So it's also in the second track on the B side. It's a track, a Tai Lü track from uh, Sipsong Pana or Shishuan Bana in uh, China. If you talk about Southeast Asia, you have to think that um, the area is bigger as only the present uh, day uh, area of Burma, Thailand, Laos, Vietnam and Cambodia which also includes parts of China and parts of India and parts of Bangladesh. Sipsong Pana, the Thai Lui used this um, single, uh, this free reed single tube instrument as their main uh, musical instrument. And uh, they're singing with it, or it's more of a sing song, so more of a kind of uh, a rap before the rap started to exist already, in which they say things in a poetic form again, in a poetic structure, and it's uh, always been in the same type of cadence, in the same type of rhythm. And that's uh, determined by the linguistic structure. Now, they sing a song which goes about the spirits of the area, the Pi Muang. Now, they are honored and as being the lords of the land, as the original owners of the land of that area. Okay, then we have a small piece of mouth harp from the Hmong. That's again um, it's an instrument which is partly a speaking instrument. So it's used by people to uh, uh, send messages to other people. In this case, it's uh, often used by young people to send a message to uh, the one they love, you know. And sneakily, they go into the house and then they play it to the girl or the boy upstairs, you know. This type of um, idea of having speaking instruments is even more strong in the mouth harp. The mouth harp is a, also a free reed instrument, but then with many tubes, and so it's always played with a kind of chord type of structure. There are two examples on this on the record, on the B, uh, B5 and B6, and they are both from the Lahu. The fifth uh, track is from the Lao Shi, also from Burma, uh, near Keng Tung. The sixth track is from, uh, from Thailand, from the Black Lahu or the Lao Na. It's meant, it's uh, a song which is meant to communicate with the spirit. And it's played by the man while uh, his wife is cooking something. Now, that's basically the record. One more thing about this uh, free reed uh, mouth harp. It was, of course, and some people try tend to forget that, instrument which inspired the uh, accordion and the uh, harmonium and the harmonica because in the 18th century one of these instruments reached Europe probably as a kind of a gift uh, by whomever you know and then it uh, was uh, heard by people of, uh, here in Europe first they thought ah, this is a great principle to synthesize speech with and then they start to make this accordion and other instruments. No, you have the mouth harp and you have the mouth organ. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jaws harp, jaws harp. But the mouth organ, for my experience, is the multiple pipe. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. The mouth organ. Yeah. Oh, I then I made a mistake. That's why I mentioned it's different. You meant the mouth organ. Yeah, 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 yeah. Band tunes, band, uh, that's, that goes about that, uh, no, not really as far as I know. Gebogen toon. Yeah, I don't know the concept. So. No, but this idea is normally in our, our type of music, eh? tones are on straight, uh, the same height all the time. While in most of the Southeast Asian music, tone is never on the same height. It's always moving, you know, up or down or whatever. Yeah, but that's, the thing is you have to, change your idea about it. Eh? 
you have to you have to see it that that is a basic principle and not the other way around that it comes from that is a deviation of the standard idea and when it is on the record so you can say this shit yeah yeah you can hear if you if you listen to it you can hear it immediately okay then uh, i finish we will take a small intermission after that, but I would like to add a few words about the record itself. Publishing the record is one thing, and the most important thing for, for the label to continue is to, of course, to sell the record and to get back the funds and to invest them in the new projects. So we've invested quite significantly in this record. Uh, as you can see, the record itself is transparent. We used 180 gram vinyl, which is the best, uh, so far, the best vinyl quality. Unique thing about this record is that Fred's recording are extremely well recorded. I've never experienced dealing with the vinyl records before. I've never experienced such a good outcome of material that is not mastered. So there was a direct transition of the Fred's recordings on the vinyl. We had to use the small pauses between the songs so we could extend the quality of the of the record because then, uh, well, the ones who know about the grooves can understand what I mean. And also, apart from the very good uh, typ typographic work, the label, uh, the, the record contains all the information that Fred is was trying to give to you so it is supplied with lots of photos that he made in all of that areas and each song is described in detail including the names of the musicians also I wanted to say one thing about our uh, concept usually um, uh, the record would be acquired would be purchased by people who have record players and I suppose not all of you have such uh, devices at home. In our case, in case of Tropos, I think if you get such a record, you will purchase the record player for it, not the other way around. Well, first of all, the warm analog sound that you can get from the uh, vinyl is quite, quite unique. I propose now we will take a small break, just relax. We can drink tea and listen to the sounds of uh, Land of Three Fogs. And then I will uh, reflect on, on the other publication of Tropos. So I hope you can all stay a bit longer, yes? Does the vinyl come with a digital download? Well, first of all, when we gathered together, me, Fred and uh, Sergei, we, we were, of course, uh, sort of trying to figure out how, in which format, uh, how to sell the records. And uh, somehow our first idea was just to limit ourselves just to analog sound, you know, just, just to be firm about it. Of course, uh, many uh, potential clients ask about streamings and the digital download. So far we didn't do anything, but I think Fred is going to do it independently on his own platform. But we wanted to give it a time for the record to show its own uh, capacity, you know, commercial capacity. Uh, and of course, uh, during this um, Corona crisis, you know, things were closed. I've approached three distribution companies so far. I've been yesterday talking with Rush Hour distribution company. The problem is that the records have quite high costs because we invested in them, you know. So that's why the price today we give a 10% discount. So the price of your record will become 36. So I realize it could be some substantial amount of money for some of you, but still would like to say that yes, today is a unique opportunity. Usually this record would cost 40. 40, 40 euro. So any of you who wants to buy the record, you could approach me or Fred or desk of Moi Chai. You can pin or you can pay cash or you can do it later. So for now, let's just hear the content of the record and enjoy. By the way, the teas that we are drinking and another reason for, for this publication, 
was, as you know, Sergei, he is a tea entrepreneur. And uh, apparently these tribes, these groups of people, they were pioneering the tea tradition because that's where the tea cultivation has started. Of course, that's where Sergei's enthusiasm was uh, coming from. Yeah, so everything is conceptually binded together. So let's hear the uh, land of three folks. So, dear friends, let me continue on. I just got an interesting uh, comment from our friend who said that uh, actually in uh, Dutch language, uh, mantis is not a vandal in the tuck, it's a bit sprinkle, yeah. So, what is vandal in the tuck then, actually? Another type of insects? Mm. It's not a, it's an insect. Yeah. Stick. I, don't know, I don't know what the name is in English, you know? The mantis. It looks like, look like a branch, it does. Yeah, but nice mantis is the same. Mantis is also. We've just discussed the um, record with materials recorded by Fred Halles. There is another publication. Of course, the content is quite different. It is in electronic music. On the cover of the record, you can see the constellation of Pisces, which are uh, taken from the first Russian star atlas that was published in 1829, I guess. So what can I tell you about this record and why would it be attractive to to record collector? And uh, first of all, the, the record, in case of Fred Halles, uh, the record is a LP, long play. The Cosmotropos record is a EP extended play. It contains only five songs, but um, the special quality of this publication is that uh, it plays on uh, 45 uh, RPM, which dramatically increases the uh, spectral quality. Yeah, the cover is decorated with the image of the constellation of Pisces, taken from the first Russian atlas of the starry sky published in 1829. Uh, Atlas was created by astronomer Christopher Raising and it consists of drawing in gold on dark blue background. It's a quite a special atlas uh, because in order to harmonize the impression produced by clear night sky above the naked eye with the chart stars of different sizes are marked in white. Holes are punched in the center of the image of stars up to the fourth magnitude and the back of the page is sealed with the light tissue paper so original um, atlas is a part of the collection of the congress of united states of america right now the reason that the uh, pisces constellation were chosen for the cover is following well first of all i have to say that i since my childhood i'm fascinated with the astronomy and cosmos. Most of my own uh, compositions are dedicated, inspired by these themes. And despite uh, faintness, Pisces uh, is notable because it contains the point at which the sun crosses the celestial equator into the northern hemisphere on March 20th each year. And as you know, this point is called vernal equinox, which is an auspicious day of the year in various ancient chronological traditions. Uh, mainly, um, it corresponds to the Persian Navruz. This day was not celebrated only by ancient Persians, of course. It was, there are four cardinal points in the calendar. But the reason I've chosen Pisces is um, following the, um, so my allusions was, um, in fact, the name of the stars that were um, associated with the Pisces constellation. And the main reason is that uh, I used to have a friend, Dutch friend, whose name was Matthias van Manen. I don't know if any of you know him. Probably some know. He was a great man. Actually, he was, um, he was my friend. He was an inventor. He was an artist. And he died like about 10 years ago, Matthias van Manen. And I've uh, just um, learned that um, in Pisces constellation, there is a very peculiar star which is called Van Manen star 
which is actually uh, named after Dutch astronomer who discovered it in 1917. The Van Manen star is too faint to be seen with the naked eye. So I decided to provide a kind of romantic impressionist parallel between the invisible white dwarf and the memory of this extraordinary person who has sunk into oblivion. All five compositions on the record are composed in the different tone scales, in different uh, music scales. Van Manen star is the only composition that is composed in European uh, chromatic uh, tempered uh, tone scale. Each of the song of the, on the record bears the name of one of the stars of the Pisces constellation. Uh, one of the composition is called Fum al Samach. It is the beta star of the Pisces. As you can hear, Fum, Fum al Samach is, a, is an Arabic uh, word, a star that can be faintly seen with the naked eye. But Fum al Samach from Arabic is translated as the mouth of the fish. In itself, Fum al Samach is a hydrogen fusing dwarf, very rapidly rotating star. Probably it is flattened on the poles from the rotation speed. I was not so much interested in the physical characteristic of this star. In the melody that I associated with this uh, star, there is a sort of falling gamut from the musical scale used in Arabic music under the name Zal Zal. It was a famous polymath, famous sort of Arabic uh, scientist, philosopher Mansur Zal Zal, who lived during the reign of Caliph Harun al-Rashid. So in this uh, composition I used an Arabic scale uh, called Zal Zal, which is a diatonic scale, has seven notes. Opening composition on this record uh, refers uh, listener to the gestalt of the Mesopotamia Anatolian character, because Pisces constellation have a uh, Babylonian o origin. Probably all of you know that most of the Greek names from the signs of the zodiac are translated or are modification of the Babylonian signs. Because Babylonians saw this constellation as a pair of fish joined by a cord. And actually in, in Greek mythology it refers to Aphrodite and Eros that were sort of lying on the bank of Tigris river when the, the, this monstrous creature Typhonus, Typhon in Russian, I, I, I hope I pronounce it well in, in English, Typhonus. So it was this ugly monster, huge ugly monster that was uh, revenging the, um, the fall of the Titans into the Tartarus. So they, they saw this uh, monster approaching, they turned into fish and then uh, they connected by a cord so they would not be uh, lost from one another. This composition which I refer to is called Kulat Nunu. That's how the constellation was called in the Babylonian language. And there is a fifth composition which um, has a Turkic name, Balik, and it embodies sort of Anatolian mood. The record itself has a lot of astronomical cosmic references, also the a label is made with a um, depiction of a um, famous atlas. I'm myself quite fascinated with, um, with maps and atlases and uh, I work with this concept in, in different um, type of... Uh, pro in different projects and what else I can add to, to the speech is that um, Tropos Records, we have two more releases that are already confirmed and are in process of being made. One of them is the um, uh, music from Altai. It's the band, uh, actually the, the project is completely 100% curated by Sergei Shevilov. Maybe he can say something about this uh, Altai uh, project. And the fourth and probably the finishing um, publication which will wrap up this uh, first, hopefully not the last uh, sort of publication projects is the, um, as I already mentioned, is the, we call this um, album Hyper Listening and uh, Hyper Listening is, um, is a special term from the 
cognitive sciences. It's a very difficult notion, but uh, basically the record contains uh, various field recordings of uh, which have to do, do with bioacoustics. So it's my recordings on uh, from Shikoku Island in Japan. Basically, it's the recordings of various cicadas. It's the because a place where I used to go every summer, except for past uh, last summer and this summer probably will not happen because Japan is still closed. But uh, I had this unique opportunity of um, living in uh, inside the so the traditional Japanese house which uh, as you know can be completely open from all sides and then those uh, beautiful uh, cicadas would just land on the uh, on this transparent uh, walls and uh, so with the I could manage to bring the microphone directly very close to cicada and record the single calls of the cicada which is quite special because usually what you hear is this multitude of cicadas, you know. And as you know, cicada is one of the uh, loudest sounding uh, insect. And it's the archetypal um, sort of sound of Japan. Anybody who traveled uh, in summer in Japan or in East Asia probably are familiar with this amazing sound. And each moment of the day corresponds to different type of cicada because before the rain, during the rain and after the rain a new type of cicada start to sing. Most of these recordings I made inside this house which was located in Kochi prefecture. What was fascinating is that around nine o'clock sharp there would be one type of cricket who would start to sing exactly for 10 minutes. It was so uh, precise uh, chronologically precise. Yes, this is uh, this beautiful sort of um, rural landscape of Japan with the Shinto uh, temple situated maybe a couple of kilometers away, you know. There's, sometimes you hear the sounds of the roosters as a typical uh, Shikoku roosters with very long tails. So that's as far as my uh, trick. The, this publication, Hyper Listening, will contain, uh, consist of four tracks. So there will be recordings from the Limpopo River of a very peculiar type of the frogs. This continuous sort of soundscape with this nocturnal call of the frogs. And then there is a unique uh, recordings of the hunchback uh, whales that was recorded last year in, in uh, Hawaii. Due to this corona crisis, uh, this uh, multitude of tourists that usually visit Hawaii were not there. So these big amounts of uh, whales would come much closer to the shores. And the, the recordings that will be published are made with the hydrophone. It's quite unique. It has nothing to do with these uh, calls of the more uh, known to the public uh, calls of the other type of the whales. I uh, I believe they're sperm whales, you know, which are sort of whistle-like calls going almost into the ultrasonic uh, spectrum. So this, those calls are very um, specific. They actually remind the, the, human, uh, the human voice. And the last track will be um, uh, recorded uh, by uh, also hydrophone recordings from Limpopo River, but from under the water, which also represents this multitude of river uh, animals and uh, their peculiar, uh, fantastic uh, calls. So that's uh, our plan for the future. Uh, we expect the, the Altaian uh, record. Also, I would like officially to give a word to our uh, host, to the person due to whom this also project started to run. He is in the center. He he remained in the shade now, but this is Sergei. In my own word, I, I can describe him. He has about 17 uh, shops, a chain of clubs, 22 clubs uh, in uh, Russian Federation in uh, Georgia. Anyway, he will tell about himself. Himself, He's, I, I would like him to say something about this Altaian project, few things. And after that, I will. Uh, we will take another uh, intermission and listen to the uh, Cosmotropos.
Uh, hi anyone, it's really glad to see so many guests here today. Uh, for me, it's a big. I'm proud of this project and proud to work with German and Fred, and hope more follow and close future. Uh, let me introduce myself. It's first about music because uh, before the tea business and traveling for tea, I traveled for music uh, for some period of time. I DJing uh, from 20. Uh, for more than 10 years and we made uh, also a label called Acid Samoa Recordings which uh, belongs to this kind of electronic experimental IDM noise techno music absolutely nothing similar to what we're doing now but I uh, still listening to some of this music too I stopped this project around 10 years ago because of it was also unconventional I switched to T for a while but music can wait as you know and if you start have relations with music you can never stop it for for a long time so just when I met German I really enjoyed his idea about the label I hope it will be a really interesting project uh, at the same time about Fred record for me it was an incredible discovery uh, when I just found that Fred traveled absolutely the same locations what I travel for tea he traveled for recording the music and I heard this music a lot but I never recorded I just have some videos uh, of a festivals but I never make it specially like professional sound record because I have no idea about that I just traveling for business and for tea but the same people like La Huzu, this is La Hu, uh, Minzo, which means like a small national minority of La Hu and Bulanzu and other national minorities of Yunnan is really belongs to my business because my main partner for example he is uh, Hani Zhu, which is Hani national minority of Yunnan province in Minhai region mostly so this is uh, it really belongs to me because for 10 years I spend in China like half of year each year this is uh, after that comes my book about Chinese, Chinese uh, traditions and Chinese technology of manufacturing tea and geography and, and whatever. Right now I'm also writing the second one which will be about Chinese ceremonies and stuff. But uh, yeah, also funny to say that we translated to English finally for three years of work. <laughs> so I hope you can read it if you didn't read Russian. Yeah, I bought the music also. I have very big uh, how to say connection to Siberia because uh, uh, my stepfather lives there in Hakasia region and also I used to live in Altai for a while in, in Hakasia in Krasnoyarsk region uh, and also used to live in Karelia so I lived during, during the childhood I live in a lot of uh, remote areas in Russia so I listened to a lot of uh, native music uh, ethnic music of Altai people for example and I have some friends project of a group by Terek which is very young Two guys, 20 years old actually, and they uh, have a throat singing band uh, by Terek, and they also planning to publish their record. We just had a tour for Russian clubs, eight cities, uh, which is very good to have tea clubs actually. The idea is, I want to make a chain in Europe, it will, it will be first, but we have a very ambitious plans for Europe. I think it will be more than 10 in close years even maybe more, we look how it's going, but uh, yeah, we're planning to make a chain for also for events, uh, because it's very easy, if you want to plan in a tour, you don't need to book the club in another city, you can use your own club, it's a good idea, yeah? So this is why we work it, and uh, this is why we have a space social, this is uh, for tea, for business, which is for events, you know? Uh, so this is why we're here, actually, right now, and uh, I hope it will scale in Europe and other cities like Paris, Berlin and whatever. And also we will of course travel with all the music what we working on. And I want to bring some musicians from China, from Russia, from whatever, uh, especially ethnic musicians because uh, what uh, actually uh, Fred um, Records published, I have a I, had, I know a lot <laughs> of people who can play it <laughs> and they will be really happy to travel uh, here or whatever. I hope it, um, we change, times will change and we're back to normal, I hope, in close years it will be and we can make it more. So yeah, I can speak eternal, but I will, will be fast a little bit, maybe German continue with the uh, Cosmotropos music. Thank you anyone for coming, always welcome for tea and for anything. I hope we will make more events like today uh, because we will have more releases. Uh, last thing to say that Gamer said we will have a finalizing, we're not finalizing, we're only continuing. We, we, we have two uh, releases uh, already prepared for publishing but I hope it will be not finalizing, it will be more 
because we are successful guys. Why not? Yeah? <laughs> Thank you. The labels for the record and uh, all special guests that came today. Ton, Bernard Kleikamp, also very, uh, very important guests. Uh, unique uh, label, Pan Records, which I grew up with and uh, I I'm completely fascinated with all content that you, Bernard. Uh, I, I heard from uh, Fred that you are stopping or you stopped already, but you're slowing down. Okay. No, but but anybody interested in uh, traditional music, uh, Pan Records is um, it's the um, yeah, yeah, I'd say it's a it's a rich source of various. Um, musical traditions from all around the globe southeast asia from russia from siberia from central asia of course uh, we live in this uh, world of decline of culture but uh, hopefully because of such entrepreneurs as sergey and uh, such uh, clubs as moi chai we can meet more frequently and have intellectual discussions drink tea and enjoy life and I would like to end up our meeting. Please stay and enjoy the tea with the sights and sounds of Cosmotropos. Thank you all for coming.